Hey, what's going on guys? It's Drake with Extreme Sports, and today we're gonna to be talking about how your scuba cylinders are hydrostatically tested. First of all, our cylinders arrive at the store. Uh, a customer will drop it off to us and for a fill, and we may have to inform them that their cylinder has to be hydroed or visually inspected. Your cylinder markings on the tank help indicate us what uh, cylinder needs to be performed, if it needs to be hydrostatically tested or visually inspected. Here are the hydrostatic dates. Located on the cylinder, we have the government agency from the top left, um, in our case, the Department of Transportation and the CTC for Canada. And then we have the metal type, depending on if that's 3AA, 3AL, meaning aluminum, or 3A. The working pressure, the serial number, and then we have the manufacturer. This could be Catalina, Luxor, Worthington, XS Scuba. And then we have the hydrostatic de test date right here. Basically, this just shows us um, exactly what date needs to be done if it's within the five years, or maybe it could be a three-year cylinder with extra markings. We then carry the cylinder into the dive shop and we begin the strip down of the cylinder to head over to hydrostatically testing. We then go ahead and double check, make sure we do a visual inspection on everything uh, visually, and then we take the cylinder net off the tank if it has one and go ahead and remove the valve cap. Once we go ahead and remove this valve cap, we will check the cylinder, make sure there's no dings and marks, basically things that would waste the time of going over to hydrostatically testing. After this step, we will go ahead and unscrew the valve and we will store that at the store. We basically place it inside of a bag and that'll help keep the elements out of the, uh, the valve itself. We then go ahead and grab the boot, place it to the side. We bag that valve, make sure none of the elements get inside of it while it's sitting. We then go ahead and mark everything, let you know that you have a specific net, a specific boot, and everything gets laid out when the uh, cylinder comes back from hydro testing and uh, everything is laid out the way you want it to be. We then go ahead and check out the valve a couple more times, make sure the valve groo groove is okay, and then we insert a transportation cap while it is going to hydro. We don't want anything getting inside that cylinder while it is on its way. As you can see here, we go ahead and load it up inside a vehicle. Uh, make sure nothing gets rolled around, and then we take the cylinder to the hydrostatics center. And once we arrive to the test center, we meet up with Grant at Marmick Fire. He will go ahead and calibrate an eddy current machine, and he will check the threads on the cylinder. He basically screws this probe on the inside, and it checks for micro cracks, and we will be explaining later in this video when we do our own visual inspection on exactly how this is performed. Uh, but you can see it is an extremely slow process and uh, it tells him exactly what the threads look like on the inside of the cylinder. After Grant completes the eddy current inspection, he goes ahead and grabs a microscope. He will stick this on the inside of the cylinder and it basically will check to see if the eddy current machine has missed any micro cracks. You can never be too sure just by checking one way. So Grant likes to go ahead and check all the individual threads by rotating this machine around. And it usually takes about 30 to 45 seconds. He then grabs a light, sticks it on on the inside, and he will check for any corrosion or pitting uh, that is on the inside of the cylinder. Basically this can stop the hydrostatic um, test from happening. If there's too much corrosion, it could possibly um, have an eruption. Grant then goes ahead and stands up the cylinder and checks for any bulging outside pitting or cracks that are starting to happen. He then goes ahead and carries the cylinder over to the testing site where he has two hydrostatic chambers. Uh, he then goes ahead and fills up the cylinders with water. And the reason we use water in hydro cylinders or cylinders that are being hydrostatically tested is because water is more forgiving. If a cylinder were to expand or erupt in the chamber, the water can exit the cylinder very, very quickly versus air would take a while, uh, therefore shooting some shards. He goes ahead and jots down the information for the individual cylinder, fills up the chamber with water. That way the cylinder is surrounded by water and the cylinder itself has water on the inside. He goes ahead and screws an adapter to each cylinder, basically because uh, he doesn't just do scuba cylinders, he tests everything from fire extinguishers to argon cylinders and every different type of gas cylinder that has to be hydrostatically tested. He goes ahead and grabs this faceplate that mounts on the inside of the hydrostatic chamber and that black o-ring looking thing on the outside 
is actually a seal that mates to the, the inside of the chamber itself. It is imploded with air and creates a nice seal and that way the only thing on the inside of the chamber is water itself. And you can see that he will drop the plate in here, all that water, extra water gets gushed out and he locks in the chamber right on the outside. He can do two cylinders up at once and he's gonna go ahead and connect the water inlet and the air inlet to seal the, uh, the chamber itself. And he goes ahead and grabs the other, uh, the other face plate that will mount to the chamber itself. That screw that goes on the inside has many, many different plates that it can mount to, like I said, uh, but it makes it also very easy for him to quickly screw in and lift up cylinders, as Grant probably does near five to 10,000 cylinders in a year, I would think. Grant then punches in some of the boring stuff on the computer. The facility he's working for in this case is Extreme Sports, punches that in. He punches in the serial number for the specific cylinder, the cylinder size, the test pressure. In this case, it is a 3,000 PSI cylinder, but he will actually be testing that cylinder to 5,000 PSI. Uh, he can then watch for the expansion rate of the cylinder itself, and it will show him while the test is happening. He can then check the cylinder manufacturer on there, the data manufacturer, the gas service, whether that's regular air, CO2, oxygen, because Grant does perform different tests. Grant then goes ahead and starts the test. He uh, points to the top number here. That is the pressure that is going inside the cylinder. And because we're using water, it is climbing extremely quickly. On air, you wouldn't be able to do that with so much heat. And then we have the permanent or the total expansion on the bottom side. He can actually see how much that bottle is turning into like a football shape. It's very minimal, uh, but he can actually measure and see that. And I'll go ahead and let you guys listen in on the test. And once the test reaches 5,000 PSI, for the test pressure, it goes ahead and holds it for 30 seconds. It can measure the total expansion rate and permanent expansion rate for that bottom number. And once it goes ahead and hits that 30 second mark, it will release the test pressure here. And you can see how quickly we can dump water outside of a cylinder. And I think the coolest part of this test is this bowl that actually fills up with water on the outside of the chamber while it's happening to measure the expansion rate. After the test is over, Grant goes ahead and takes the cylinders out of the test chambers, moves them over to the drying station and stamping station where he can um, empty the cylinders out and goes ahead and stamps the cylinders for the new hydro dates. And Grant goes ahead and unscrews the top hat for the cylinder unscrews the cap and places them on the new cylinders for the new ones that are getting ready to head up. And he can do two cylinders on this one as well. And here comes the fun part. This is when Grant gets to punch in the hydrostatic cylinder markings on the cylinder. And he will go ahead and punch in the month here, which is specific to, of course, when it was done. And he will then follow that up with his specific Department of Transportation cylinder marking. This basically will let uh, the Department of Transportation know if anything were to happen to the specific cylinder, uh, they know where the last hydrostatic date was tested. He will then finalize with the year of the specific testing, punched in right here.
Grant then grabs a brush to go ahead and scrape off any of the extra paint that was caused by the cylinder marking step. He then grabs his copper tubing that he uses to dry the cylinders to wash off any of the excess paint chips. He connects the copper tubing and he will flip these cylinders over and introduce hot water on the inside of them. The reason we use hot water is to dry these cylinders. If we were to just stick air on the inside of the cylinders and dry them, it would cause um, corrosion on the inside, inside to be introduced. And this is 160 degree Fahrenheit water being introduced on the inside. Once the cylinder arrives back from hydrostatic testing, we go ahead and remove the travel insert cap and scrape off the old visual inspection sticker as our hydrostatic testing price includes a new visual inspection here at the store and a fresh fill. A lot of people don't really know what Visual Plus is, and it is a non-destructive testing device which utilizes eddy currents to detect neck and shoulder cracks, folds, or other similar imperfections. Basically, an electromagnetic wave is introduced into the metal in the threaded area. There is a wave that causes the currents to flow in a circular manner in the metal. They are called eddy currents because the flow is circular. An imperfection can increase the path that the currents have to flow and make so the material appear higher in resistance in that region where the imperfection is present. This generates a spike on the computer generated report which alerts the technician to a problem that requires further investigation. We then go ahead and remove the old o-ring and lubricate the threads with an oxygen compatible lubrication. We'll then apply the, uh, the new o-ring and tighten down the hand wheel. Sometimes these can, these can actually back out. So we like to go ahead and do this as a safety precaution. And then we will go ahead and pick out the old o-ring on the top of the cylinder valve. This is of course different if it is a yoke style or a den style valve, but we will go ahead and replace this and then go ahead and screw it into the cylinder itself. We will then go ahead and snug up that valve and apply any accessories that were on the cylinder when it arrived, if that's a boot, a net, maybe a pony system that has a clamp, or maybe it was a stage bottle for side mount diving or anything specific. The last step, of course, is to go ahead and fill up the cylinder with the required gas that the customer wants. If that is a nitrox cylinder, we will go ahead and O2 clean it with our specific process. And uh, I hope this has kind of helped you guys visualize what hydrostatic testing is. It's one of those steps that's kind of quickly glanced over in a couple different classes, but you don't really get to see the process and what your cylinder goes through once you drop it off here in the store. So if you guys have any questions, give me a holler. Uh, you can shoot me an email at drake at westonfamilycompanies.com or you can give us a call at 417-659-9009. Thanks. Have a good day.